What is going on everyone? How about we stay in Ohio and take a look at Southwest Ohio's Cincinnati. Most people just refer to it as Cincy and it has a couple other nicknames. The Queen City, Porkopolis, Porkopolis? That must be home to Chubby Superman or something. Cincinnati is home to just under 300,000 residents with the entire metro area having about 2 million people. The Queen City sits on the Ohio River with Covington, Kentucky directly across that river. Cincinnati was settled in 1788 and was incorporated into a city in 1819. I think I hold the record in Cincinnati for saying something the quickest. I had flown into Cincinnati, it was a small plane, so they let us out on the tarmac and it was an extremely hot day. And as I stepped outside the door of this little plane, I said, Holy hell, I need to get out of this city. And the flight attendant goes, you haven't even stepped foot in the city yet. Give it a chance. To be fair, it isn't really a hot city, but that week it was terribly hot. Cincinnati is home to the Major League Baseball team, the Reds, and home to the NFL team, the Cincinnati Bengals, whose quarterback, Andy Dalton, was selected in the draft because his hair closely matches the uniform. He's actually a really good quarterback. And stop typing. If you're watching this video at a later date and he's retired or doesn't play for the team anymore, don't leave some comment about me not knowing what I'm talking about. He doesn't even play for him or something like that. Look at the upload date. Cincinnati is a great city with a lot of water, history, and hardworking Americans. Like most places, it's not for everyone. This list is about things you should know before you move to Porkopolis. So lean back and watch my top 10 reasons not to move to Cincinnati. Number 10. Charles Manson Charles Manson, the infamous serial killer and Ohio nut job, was born in Cincinnati in 1934. Thankfully for the people of Cincinnati, he didn't stay long. It's still rather scary that a serial killer was born in your city. Nobody is proud of having a serial killer being from their town. Maybe this dude. Tourists love to bring this up, and the locals find it rather annoying. Do yourself a favor, and don't bring it up to one of the locals, lest that person you're talking to looks like this dude. In that case, I encourage you to continue to talk about it ad nauseum. Make them as uncomfortable as they make the rest of us. Number 9. Kentucky. From Cincinnati, Kentucky is just a short drive over one of six bridges. The two states are separated by the Ohio River. Because the city borders Kentucky, it becomes the punchline of Ohio. For one reason or another, the rest of the state hates on Cincinnati for being so close to Kentucky, like they have something to do with what goes on in Kentucky. Apparently, most of Ohio looks down on Kentucky. And I don't get why that's a thing. I talked about a guy from Cleveland that I used to work with. We don't like each other, like I said in the last video. He's kind of a dick. Whenever someone did something stupid at work, he would say, must be from Cincy. That was like his go-to line. I asked him about that one time. He said, Cincinnati's where all the idiots live in Ohio. I said, you know you're from Cleveland, right? He said, yes. And then I asked him if he's ever heard the thing about people living in glass houses. And I kid you not, the dude looked at me and said, my house isn't made of glass. It's two by fours, drywall and siding. Maybe the windows are glass. I had to walk away from him at that point. Number eight, chili on spaghetti. This falls under the category of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. In this case, I imagine this makes your stomach stronger. Cincinnati does some bizarre and rather questionable things the rest of the country just can't wrap their head around. Spaghetti can be eaten in very different ways. There's a lot of different sauces that can be cooked and put on spaghetti. However, meat sauce tends to be the most common one, at least among Americans. This is why the rest of the country finds it odd that Cincinnati puts chili on their spaghetti. Locals argue that it's very similar to meat sauce, so it's a big deal. Some of the residents say it's chili and it's our thing leave us alone this is the sort of thing that would make gordon ramsay launch into a profanity laced tirade if you move to cincinnati don't be surprised when you see this on a menu someplace Number seven, the weather. The weather can get pretty bad in Cincy. The biggest issue is that it's very unpredictable. During the coldest times of the year, temperatures can drop as low as the 20s and then stay there for weeks at a time. The city sees an average of 132 days of either rain or snow every single year. During the summer months, temperatures can rise up to the mid 80s, but they hardly ever get up to 93 or above. So that's a good thing. No 100 degree days during the summer. If it happens, it's once in a blue moon. Like I said about Cleveland, the weather in Cincinnati is bipolar. It's very very hard to be a weatherman in Porkopolis. Number six, lack of variety. Cincinnati has a very hard time being diverse. The city is 49.3% white, 44.9% African American. That means you got almost 6% of others. If the numbers aren't enough for you, we can see it in the lack of variety in the cuisine throughout the city. A majority of the restaurants are American food or comfort food, a few Italian restaurants, and very few Mexican restaurants. And Taco Bell does not count, so stop typing. One good thing about those numbers, if you get an Uber, you got really good odds that there won't be a language barrier. 
there. Yeah, I, I almost said luggage barrier, but there won't be one of those either. Luggage is rarely caught racial profiling people, so there's that. <laughs> Number five. Crime. Cincinnati is not a place to move to in order to feel safe. You can't leave your house unlocked. You should move someplace with a garage because your car might get stolen on the street. And you should always carry pepper spray at a minimum. Having one of those ring doorbells on every single door, window, crawl space, and air vent is a good plan. Sure, this may cause some confusion when UPS wants a signature, but at least you have an idea of who's moving around the outside of your house. The overall crime rate is 118% higher than the national average. For every 100,000 residents, there's about 16 reported crimes each day. Because of this, the city is safer than only 3% of the cities in the country, and it's not the worst place in the country for people getting whacked, but the theft is really high. So your stuff will be missing. A lot. Number four, public transit. Cincinnati is lacking when it comes to everyday commuter transportation. The city does offer a public bus and a streetcar. However, the streetcar only has like 18 stops throughout an 80 square mile city. That's not a lot of stops. That's not a serious streetcar either. The city at one point made an effort to have an underground subway system, but it was never completed and now it just sits abandoned. And that's always a great thing. Big giant abandoned tunnel under a city right next to a river. I'm sure it's fine. Don't worry about it. Maybe they'll open up a preschool down there. If you've ever stayed in a major city, you know traffic sucks. All of them have some sort of rush hour that ranges from bad to a daily horrific experience. A good commuter system goes a long way. Portland doesn't have terrible traffic. Now, the locals complain because it has gotten a little bit worse, but it would be so much worse here if their train system, their metro rail, whatever, wasn't as good as it is. Number three, Harambe. On May 28, 2016, a toddler fell into the gorilla enclosure at the Cincinnati Zoo. In an effort to save the boy's life, officials took the gorilla's life. After a YouTube video of the incident went viral, there was a lot of controversy around this situation. Why this is a reason not to move here, it's simple. It affected the reputation of this city from a few different points of view. How could someone be so careless to let their child fall into a frickin' gorilla enclosure? And also, how could the zoo let this happen? And did they need to shoot Harambe. My opinion is, yes, they had to. You can't wait to see how it plays out with an animal that could kill a child in the blink of an eye. As far as the parents and the zoo goes, my opinion is they're both at fault. But this has been a big controversy. It's dying down a little bit, but you'll find that it's still brought up occasionally. And it's too bad. The whole situation was just ugly. <laughs> Number two, the cost of living. Cincinnati isn't the greatest place to live, but it's not the worst. The rub is the cost of living is that of a much better place. If you're visiting Cincinnati from anywhere else in Ohio, you should expect to see some pretty steep prices, a lot higher than what you're used to. The overall cost of living here is 3% higher than the state average, while transportation is 13% higher than the state average and 8% higher than the national average. So they're kind of giving you the feeling of living someplace special with all those high prices and all that, but you're not. At least you can save a little money because you don't need all that sunscreen like other cities that I've covered lately. Before we get to number one, don't forget the poll towards the end of the video. It'll be up in the top right corner of the video. And number one, segregation. Segregation is still a very big problem in Cincinnati. Huffington Post ranks Cincinnati as the fifth most segregated city in America. Just to break it down, among African-American residents in the city, the unemployment rate is 8.1%, while for whites, it's only 4.2%. 30% of African-American residents are living in poverty, while only 10% of white residents are living in poverty. In 2001, Cincinnati had some riots after an unarmed black teenager was shot and killed by police officers. Tensions were already high in the city following a serious series of other incidents of alleged police brutality and racial profiling. The total damage sustained from the riots was $3.6 million in the city. In all, the city said that 127 businesses suffered damage from the rioting. All right, so that's my top 10 reasons not to move to Cincinnati. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Don't forget the poll at the end of the video. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.